What's up, ceramic students? Welcome back to the studio. I'm now a couple of class days into my uh, coil pot here, and um, I want to show you uh, sort of the finishing steps or sort of where you could potentially take this thing. Now, there are a lot of decisions you have to make along the way here in order to get it from a basic pinch pot, you know, up and then kind of making decisions about what sort of turns those walls are going to make. Uh, but the most significant change that has happened has to, has to do with sort of the rim up here. Now, I may have mentioned in an earlier video this idea that um, uh, as you start to build, right, um, the amount of work that appears to be getting done gets sort of smaller and smaller and smaller. It almost feels like there's this diminishing return where you spend lots and lots and lots more time on smaller and smaller and smaller stuff. Um, that's particularly true when we talk about the sort of finish of this piece or the very, very top. And so you, you will very likely sort of carefully be adding a bunch of coils in there. But uh, one of the things that you have the option to do if you're uh, meeting with me at school is that we could take this over to the pottery wheel and um, I can show you how to sort of wheel throw a finish to your hand-built pot. And uh, I'll kind of snip in a little clip of film here in a minute just to kind of show you uh, how that process might work. But um, once, once I've helped you sort of wheel throw the finish up here, what ends up happening is you know, your eye um, focuses very heavily on the kind of tight rotational symmetry of the, uh, the finished rim and tends to sort of ignore the wonkiness of your, your hand-built piece down here. Now, maybe if sort of a rough hand-built form is exactly what you want, um, throwing uh, the finished rim is not the right idea, but the sort of combination of hand-built and wheel-thrown uh, I've always found to be kind of a nice uh, a nice finish to a piece, and so I'll make that available to you guys. Uh, then what uh, I'm doing here in the very last step is I'm just kind of considering a couple of small embellishments and uh, and where this could go. Um, part of this could be uh, if this is a practical piece for you, does it have a purpose? Uh, that may influence how you might add or if you're going to add a hole to it. Um, uh, or uh, in this case, I'll be putting a couple of handles on the top because this piece will be a hanging piece. Uh, the handles are just going to be sort of blocks of clay that I eventually shape a little bit more as they get harder. Um, but maybe the most important thing to consider here right at the end is what to do with the surface detail. Um, I have smoothed out all the coil work on the outside of the piece, and so I'm left with something like a smooth pot. There's a lot of working, like hand tool working spots, the sort of sponge marks that mark the perfect rotation here of the wheel throne. Uh, but the idea of being able to work back into it at this point, because it's nice and uh, leather hard, it's a very stiff piece of clay, very similar to, say, maybe um, uh, carving in wood. You could carve some detailed design into the outside, and uh, it kind of sounds like a fun possibility for this piece. We'll see how it goes, and if I have enough, have enough time left in the evening here to make that all happen. But what I want to show you in the, uh, in the video tutorial now, while I'm waiting for some of these small handle components to dry, is how I ended up uh, going about the wheel thrown finish to the piece. So in the studios we have a handful of electric wheels to work on and honestly wheel thrown pottery, I mean it is a, a whole animal in and of itself. Um, it takes quite a long time to perfect um, so I'll be helping you guys probably quite a bit with this process. But what I'm going to be able to do is to um, uh, take your piece, get it centered up on one of these electric wheels and uh, and help you sort of true up just the top section. In order to do this I'm going to need you to um, add at least an inch or two of fresh clay to the top and the fresh clay is really the only thing that I'll be able to have any control over on the wheel. So uh, uh, these pieces are nothing like the centered uh, wheel thrown pieces that I might make on the wheels themselves uh, but even an out of centered piece I can, I can sort of throw uh, and so what your eye will be attracted to on this piece will be the sort of centered and um, thrown portion and your eye won't, and it'll sort of distract from maybe some of the wonky belly of your pot. I use some wet clay clamps to just sort of gently clamp your piece down to the wheel head. And uh, this is kind of a handy tool. As long as the two types of clay that you're using um, are different drynesses, uh, they shouldn't stick too badly. So I use a really wet clay for the clamp and the bottom of my pot is sort of leather hard. Uh, it sticks down to the wheel head really nicely and just sort of temporarily clamps the piece in place. I still have to be pretty gentle with the rim here, uh, but uh, since this clay that I'm throwing here is so soft, uh, I shouldn't have any issues 
um, getting it thrown out. By adding a bit of moisture to the clay here, I'm compressing the clay in between fingers, so I'm pinching the wall thickness. I'm also pressing it down. Uh, that's strengthening the clay before I do any shaping. I'm also taking this opportunity to help kind of soften the transition uh, at the neck here. I, when I added clay coils to my piece, the corner was a little bit too sharp. Uh, the clay was also a little bit too dry, and so I'm making sure uh, that this joint doesn't crack by compressing and, uh, and blending the wet clay and dry clay together. The sponge helps add just a bit of water right when I need it. And then my fingertips are doing all the work. Once I'm happy with the lines of the piece and I've got everything blended, blended in as well as I think I can, I'll take a needle tool and slice off the excess clay from the top. This, it, this levels the top of the pot and, uh, and really gives it a nice finished look. The sponge here is just kind of knocking off any rough edges uh, and then I'll begin the shaping process of the neck. And this process really is up to you. Uh, you could choose to shape it a lot, you could choose to shape it a little. I'm just adding what's called a slight flare to this piece. Uh, it's got a bit of an amphoric sort of form to it, kind of a classical form, and so I'm just kind of, um, I'm going to end up flaring it out a bit, and in the final piece, I'll end up slicing off a bit more of the rim. At this point, I'll let you do a little bit of the smoothing work. Uh, the whole piece has been sort of joined, smoothed, and formed, and I would like for you to get a sense for how it feels, so I'll let you sit down at the wheel, and um, you can let the clay kind of run through your fingers, and uh, if something terrible happens, I'll jump in and, and do some corrections for you, but it'll be a, a good introduction to the wheel, and a nice way to finish up these coil pots. So I've just kind of um, sized up the blocks that I'm going to use and what I need to do first before I get any further along in my kind of thinking or design process here is I really need to get this wet clay added to the piece. Uh, my pot is already sort of racing towards really, really dry and I'm concerned that if I don't, um, if I don't get the clay scored and slipped on there soon, um, it won't actually take. Remember that my pot has already undergone a pretty good amount of um, sort of shrinking during the drying process. And uh, these handles will still have to shrink quite a bit. And so if there's a shrinking differential between the two pieces I'm trying to add, um, they just pop right off, uh, which is no good. And so I need to really do a good job of attaching anything at this point. If you're trying to um, add anything to your clay pots at this point, uh, you really need to make a good job of scoring and slipping it and, uh, and then probably blending it into the clay body itself. Uh, blending in this case just sort of means uh, go in there with your thumb and make sure that that seam uh, completely disappears. Uh, if you need to use a little bit of water, go ahead and add some water to kind of soften it all in there. Remember the, the wet clay is totally sculptable, so if you're adding something, uh, we got to get it attached first and then we can kind of finish the sculpting process. Don't get too bent out of shape about it losing its form here. So there's not much more I can do to those until they have dried up a little bit. Uh, my piece is just kind of racing towards drying out now, so I'm really going to have to call it quits on all the work on this very soon. These small handles will have a small hole drilled in and a little bit of smoothing, but at that point I pretty much have to call it. So um, other than maybe doing a little bit of thumbing and signing the bottom, uh, that coil pot is finished. I look forward to seeing how you sort of finish up with your designs, guys, and I'd love to help you out kind of uh, realize your vision. I'll catch up with you in the studio.